<laughs> okay, I'm back. It takes a while to get that little key in and uh, and all that, but I moved that collar over to, uh, from 15 to 30, and that should give uh, a thousandth and a half depth of cut, and uh, that will put that gauge uh, about one ten thousandth shy of uh, the number I was pointing at. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, get this going and we'll check it out and see how it is he is to uh, creep up on something reasonably with his head. Here we go. Okay, still running at 1800 RPM, 8 10,000 speed. One and a half thousand step to cut. Power feet off. Okay. So I'll crank the uh, spindle head out of the way. Up it goes. I'll slip that downboard gauge in there. Oh, I got my fingers crossed here. Let's see what happens. Oh, I don't know. Try right about in there. Boy, that's uh, kind of iffy. Hmm. Now it was there. Let me stabilize this now, kind of burnish it in a little bit, a little bit of fuzz. You know, that's just awful. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure how I can apply this head with that collar, you know, but uh, at this point, um, this uh, collar and head and stuff appear to be in very good condition. Uh, I can't recommend this thing. <laughs> So I wasted my, uh, my money, and you don't have to waste yours. I think it's a turkey. <laughs> okay. So, let's get it back down here. Don't crunch the gauge. I, I gotta fix the plastic. It's kind of popping up there. But I think that gauge is probably 60 or 70 years old. Okay. So, my conclusion is I think it's disappointing. I'll play around with it a little bit more, and it could be 
that I could use this to creep up on a diameter. And uh, one of the things about a, a more jig bore is it's uh, really quite easy uh, to change uh, the spindle. You know, tools in it, I'll show you. I get this up, something like that. Got to put it in gear, put the brake on. And just pop it loose like that. I better move it up a little bit. See, they come out that that easy with that thread sucks them in. Makes the machine only run in one direction too. So you can I can use these regular boring heads and uh, step out a hole. And uh, then for the final cut, if I'm doing more than one hole, then use the more beauty. Now, this head, it, it has a vernier for the tents right here. But uh, this is a jewel of a head for a more, more jig bore. Just really, really nice. And, uh, but these kind of heads, you don't have to be this precision all the time. If I was doing, uh, one hole, like a, like a pocket in a power transfer case of some kind, hydraulics or something, um, this is the head I'd use to creep up on the, on the sides, like after I sleeved a damaged hole where a bearing spun out or something like that. But if I'm doing uh, multiple holes, I can use this thing to uh, get to the point of this thing. And maybe that collar will work out. I'll, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it more, uh, more thought. But I think I'm going to spin that uh, square head off that and put the wimpy uh, <laughs> round head back on it. Okay, save your money. Don't buy that thing. Okay, bye-bye.